This is Twit. Well, I guess we should talk about the big story, which is the worst security flaw in the history of all mankind. At least it would be if you watched mainstream media. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, I've been trying to, and, and I've listened to Steve Gibson's explanation for this several times. <laughs> over and over. And I think I understand how well I don't understand this, but uh, it's a very complicated thing. But the way that I would characterize this is that chips for the last... Since what, 1995. Yeah, yeah, 13 years now. Uh, they guess what is going to happen to speed things up. And we've now discovered that that information that they're guessing can be peeked at. Leaked. Leaked, harvested, whatever. Theoretically, it's all theoretical. So the, the, the good, we'll start with the good news or the, or the sunny perspective. That's why I'm here, Leo, is to provide the sunny, happy oh, yeah. perspective. <laughs> Mr. Optimist. Yes, uh, which, is that, which is that, first of all, we don't know of any actual exploit that's taken place from this. And number two, it's going to be fixed and it's all going to be fine. <laughs> uh, that's okay, the best I might, possible scenario. Yeah, it's the best possible scenario, but it may actually not be true. But we'll, 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 we'll delve into that a little bit. These are the two flaws, which were interestingly discovered simultaneously. Meltdown yep. and Spectre. Spectre affects Intel chips. Meltdown affects not just Intel chips, but AMD chips and uh, some ARM chips, including Qualcomm uh, chips. And the, that's what is really the issue here. And one of the reasons I say it is probably the most serious security flaw we've seen is because it pretty much affects any modern computer, Everything. including an iPhone, including an iPad. Yeah. Uh, and so that means it's widespread. What it isn't is easy. Right. And there's an, Bruce Schneier talks a little bit about uh, the synchronicity of two in, completely independent teams discovering this. Mm -hmm. And apparently this is not unusual. He, well, Bruce is very literate, so he compares Leibniz and Newton discovering calculus at the same time. I don't think it's like that. But it, I think what it is is researchers tend to look in the yes. same alleyways. Yes. And this is a category of, of flaws called timing flaws that have been lately very fruitful. Rohammer is an example mm -hmm. where, where people were able to kind of look into memory based on a, on a kind of a, a weird race condition. So uh, we will... Um, we will uh, so in other words... It's interesting that these are discovered by independent teams. Schneier says that's one reason we should worry about this because if these two teams discovered it at the, roughly the same time independently, who else discovered it? And mm -hmm. who might have discovered it even a year ago or two years ago? Or 10 years ago. Or 10 years ago, including the NSA. Yeah. Um, so this is, uh, and I think, was it Micah suggested this XKCD yeah. comic strip? Randall is, a, is great at explaining this stuff. The melt. This is uh, XKCD number nineteen thirty eight. Uh, the meltdown inspector exploits use speculative execution. What's that? Well, you know the trolley problem. Well, for a while now, and geeks know the trolley problem because it's talked about a lot in right. self driving cars. Yes. Well, for a while now, CPUs have basically been sending trolleys down both paths, quantum style while awaiting your choice. That's speculative ex execution. Intel started doing it in 1995 because it really did speed up processors. They would guess what you will do next, start that execution, and when if they guess correctly, it would be massive improvements. If they guess wrong, yeah, you'd be a, uh, you'd have to back up a little bit. Yeah. But it turned out the massive improvement outweighed the slowdown. So every processor, modern processor, uses speculative execution, except for maybe some of the dumbest ARM processors. Raspberry yeah. Pi, for instance, says, right. we don't do that, so we don't have to worry. So... You know the trolley problem? Well, for a while now, both CPUs have basically been sending trolleys down both paths, quantum style, while awaiting your choice. Then the unneeded phantom trolley disappears. They say, well, you didn't do that. So, But the phantom trolley isn't supposed to touch anyone, but it turns out you can still use it to do stuff, and it can drive through walls. What, she, what she's saying here, and what's happening with Meltdown Inspector is... Because another technique used by processors to speed up execution, very fast, level one cache right next to the processor, mm -hmm. in the speculative branch, it will load that cache yeah. with data for the next process. And it turns out the current process can peak at that data. This is why it isn't the most useful flaw ever, because that data, you don't really get to choose what's in that right. cache, but it might contain passwords, right. you know, logins, credit card numbers. If you could do it a lot, 
like for over a long period of time might be really valuable. That's where, by the way, the biggest risk is to people running on processors, shared processors, like in virtual machines or yes. in servers. Right. So often when you have a web server, you're running on the same machine as a hundred other websites. Mm -hmm. If one of those websites were a bad actor, he could run software that would then peek into all the other websites, cache activities, yep. and perhaps over a period of time, get stuff. So that's the, the biggest risk. And by the way, that's why Amazon Web Services, uh, Google Services, Microsoft Azure, they've all been down lately. Right. Even Epic Gaming went down. Mm -hmm. In fact, they said, if you're playing Fortnite on our servers, you may notice some slowness. We're trying to patch them as fast as we can. Yeah. <laughs> so this is so this is a big problem on shared processors because then you wouldn't have to ever have malware on your system. It could just be somebody else acting badly. But if you had malware or even – and Apple discovered that – this is a scary one. Uh, I think it was Meltdown can be uh, achieved by a browser running a JavaScript program. So you could theoretically mm. go to a bad website and the JavaScript hidden on that website could actually try to read your – memory contents. It would only get what was in the cache. It would be really hit or miss. It's a much better tool for targeted. That's why the NSA yeah. would love this. Because right. if you know, if I'm going after Mike Elgin, pardon, pardon this long explanation, but I... It's I, complicated. The, it, I think even it's important, the, yeah. Even, even the cartoon has to be explained. Yeah. So, uh, that sounds bad. Honestly, I've been assuming we were doomed ever since I learned about Rowhammer. That was the other timing flaw right. uh, that uh, did... That What's Rowhammer? If you toggle a row of memory cells on and off really fast, you can use electrical interference to flip nearby bits and... Do we just suck at computers? Yep, especially shared ones. So, you're saying the cloud is full of phantom trolleys armed with hammers. Yes, that's exactly right. Okay. Uh, I'll just install updates. Good idea. That's the bottom line. Yes. <laughs> Update. Right. Because everybody, Microsoft, Apple, Qualcomm, even Intel and AMD say we're going to put out patches. Those would be the better patches, the patches at microcode level. Um, but, but if you're running Windows, it's been patched. If you're running a recent version of Macintosh, it's been patched. And those patches will continue to come out.